This is BBC Bite Size with Chris Smith and with Richard Van Norden. We're from The Naked Scientists. This podcast is all about the calculations that we use in chemistry. And in part one, we'll be discussing how to balance a chemical equation. So, Richard, first off, tell us what is a chemical equation? Well, a chemical equation is just a way of describing a chemical reaction. A word equation will tell you that, say, carbon reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, but it doesn't tell you how much carbon will react with how much oxygen. The chemical equation would be C plus O2 goes to CO2. And do you have to just learn that, or can you physically work it out? No, if you know what's reacting and what the products are, you can normally work out the quantities of each by balancing the equation. It's important that equations do balance, that's always true in maths, but what does that mean in chemistry terms? Well, it's all based on the fact that you can't create, destroy, or change atoms in a chemical reaction. So you must end up with the same number of each type of atom as you started with. So in other words, if I put in five atoms of oxygen, I've got to make sure that the products coming out at the other end also contain five atoms of oxygen. That's the idea. And the only other thing to do is to make sure you have a whole number of each molecule on each side of the equation. Now, to do this, you have to juggle the numbers of each molecule until the equation balances on each side. So, for an example... Let's say we're reacting lithium with hydrochloric acid to form lithium chloride and hydrogen. Now the first thing you do is work out the formula for everything in the equation. Lithium is a metal, so that's just Li. Hydrochloric acid is HCl. To give hydrogen, H2. And lithium chloride, LiCl. Now you have to see if the equation is going to balance just as it is, with one in front of everything. It might work, and if not, it'll give you an idea what to do next. So we start and end with one atom of lithium, Li, so that's OK. And we start and end with one atom of chlorine, so that's also OK. But we start with one hydrogen atom, HCl, but coming out is two, H2, so there's a problem. Exactly, and you can't finish with less than one hydrogen molecule, so we'll have to increase the number of hydrogen atoms we start with. We can only do this by increasing the amount of HCl at the start. So let's put two in front of the HCl, which gives us Li plus 2HCl, goes to H2 and LiCl. Problem is now we haven't got enough chlorine, have we? Because we've put in 2HCl, so there's two chlorines going in, but we've still got LiCl, just one chlorine coming out. Exactly. We don't have enough chlorine at the end, so we should finish with 2LiCl. That means that we're going to have to start with two lithium atoms. So altogether we have 2Li, 2HCl goes to H2 and 2 LiCl, and that works. You've got exactly the right number of atoms of each element on each side of the equation. Now, let's try hydrogen and oxygen to produce water. H2 plus O2 goes to H2O. If we look at that on the left-hand side, we have a molecule of hydrogen made up of two atoms, a molecule of oxygen made up of two atoms. On the right-hand side, a molecule of water with our two hydrogens, but only one oxygen. Now we're going to have to increase the number of oxygens we finish with. Let's put a 2 in front of the H2O. And that'll mean that to balance that, we have to put a 2 in front of the H2 on the left-hand side. That gives us 2H2 plus O2 goes to 2H2O. You could argue that 4H2 plus 2O2 to 4H2O would work as well. And in fact, yes, there are lots and lots and lots of correct equations. We just normally try and make the maths easier by simplifying as much as possible, but taking care not to end up with half a molecule. Thank you, Richard. So in this podcast, we've learned about chemical equations and how to balance them. And in part two, we'll see how you apply them to real chemistry.